sea of forgetfulness The chains of yesterday surround me I yearn for peace and rest I don't want to end up where you found me And it echoes in my mind Keeps me awake tonight I know you've cast my sin as far as The east is from the west And I stand before you now As, as though I've never sinned Today I feel like I'm just one mistake away From you leaving me this way Jesus, can you show me just how far the east is from the west Cause I can't bear to see the man I've been Rising up in me again In the arms of your mercy I find rest just how far the east is from the west From one scarred hand to the other I start the day the war begins Endless reminding of my sin And time and time again your truth is drowned out by the storm I'm in Today I feel like I'm just one mistake away From you leaving me this way Jesus, can you show me just how far the east is from the west Cause I can't bear to see the man I've been Come rising up in me again Just how far the east is from the west One's got hand to the other I know you've washed me white Turned my darkness into light I need your peace to get me through To get me through this night I can't live by what I feel But by the truth you were Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Congregational Church of Bound Brook. My name is Reverend Andrew Smith, and I'm so happy you could join us today as we look into God's Word and try to find some encouraging things in it that we can apply to our present situation. The title of my message today is Pass Your Past. Kirk Talley penned these words. You can get past your past. You can walk away from painful memories. Pass your past. You don't have to be alone. You can stand upon the word of God. Your yesterdays can be gone. 
Let Jesus bring you past your past so you can go on. One of the most difficult realities for Christians is the reality of guilt. Guilt has a way of paralyzing our futures. Because we are looking backwards at things that we have done or things that have been done to us, it has a way of putting us in a position where we feel that we don't have the resources to please God or to make something good of our lives. Guilt, shame, pain, and suffering, all things that we can attribute to circumstances of our past. Sometimes these things hang on to us. They clutch to our ankles and trip us up and make us unable to have the life that we want to have and make us feel insufficient for having a relationship with God and pleasing God. Well, God wants to say to us today through his word that by his power, the things that trip us up, those things in our past that keep us in bondage, God by his power can deliver us from those things and give us abundant life, joy and fulfillment and peace and knowledge that God is always with us and that we can please him. Today, I want to look at three particular stories from the Word of God, two from the Old Testament and one from the New. And I want to use these lives as examples of people who, whose past was keeping them from accomplishing the purposes of God in their life. But thank God, by God's power, they were able to overcome their past and they were able to truly please God and have a very successful life. God willing, we can learn from these three lives. We can learn from their particular experiences of the past. And hopefully we can apply it to what we're going through and the troubles that we have to find a way to get out of those things, to find a way to encourage our spirits and to be motivated to please God for the rest of our lives. But before we do, let's pray. Father, in these few moments, I thank you first and foremost for your love, for your forgiveness, and for your grace. This message is about that, about how you can take us from where we are with all of the baggage that we bring to the table, and you can deliver us and give us truly abundant life. I pray, Lord God, that you will speak to us, that you will use these three stories from your word to encourage us wherever we are, that you are able to deliver us and give us abundant life. Speak to us now, Father God. We commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Three individuals who were able to get past their past, and it is a guide to our own lives, and hopefully we will see ourselves in them. The first individual is found in Judges chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. I'm just going to read very brief portions of scripture describing the situations that these people were in. And hopefully we can see ourselves in them. Judges chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. It says there, Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty warrior. His father was Gilead. His mother was a prostitute. Gilead's wife also bore him sons, and when they were grown up, they drove Jephthah away, saying to him, You are not going to get any inheritance in our family, they said, because you are the son of another woman. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and settled in the land of Tob, where a gang of scoundrels gathered around him and followed him. Jephthah, an example of a life that was filled with the rejection of loved ones. Let me say this, my friend. No one can hurt you more than the people that you are close to. And I'm sure you know that in your life. Family members, friends, 
It's one thing when a stranger tries to hurt you, but it's a totally different scenario when the people closest to you, the people you depend upon to protect you, to keep you safe. Unfortunately, sometimes these people can be the source of destruction, a source that is used to keep us tripping up over our past. You know, Jephthah was an extremely gifted man. The Bible describes him as a mighty warrior, someone who had a great future ahead of him. He says his father was Gilead. It also says that his mother was a prostitute, a, a very, very common scenario in the world. He was an outside child. And when he became of age, his brothers, his half brothers came to him and said to him, we need you to leave because you will not get our father's inheritance because your mother is not our mother. You are an outside child. And can you imagine the impact that that had on Jephthah? A guy with a lot of great potential. Because of that, he left his home. And the Bible says he went to a different land and surrounded himself with people who probably loved him, but people who were not necessarily good for him. Let me say this, my friend. Rejection has a way of pushing us to want to prove something to ourselves and to the people who've hurt us. And unfortunately, sometimes that will lead us to places and to people who may not necessarily be good for our future. People that might pull us away from God's original intent for our lives. And Jephthah, even though he was so gifted, the Bible suggests here up to verse 3 that he was in trouble. Because in an attempt to protect himself, he put himself around men who were going to pull him down and ultimately lead to his destruction. Let me ask you something, my friend. Have you ever been rejected by a loved one? Have you experienced pain so deep in your heart that even to this day, even if it happened 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, to this day, the wound is fresh? Are you struggling with that reality? Well, let me say this, my friend. God is saying to you and to me, you can get past your past. He is here not just to give us insight about how to live a good life. He's here to deliver us from a past that trips us up, a past that keeps us in bondage to other people's feelings about us. Oh, my friend, God can set you free from that today. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it lingers. But today, by the grace of God, you can find rest in your spirit, knowing this, that even if everyone that is close to you forsakes you, God never will. He never will. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 27, verse 10, when my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up or the Lord will receive me. He will never reject his own. The Bible also says in Isaiah 49 verses 15 and 16, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, God says, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Oh, my friend. You are precious in God's sight. Human beings will let you down. Even the closest people to you may let you down, but God never will. The closest people to you may abandon you or leave you for whatever reason, but God never will. And Jephthah, even though he was in a foreign land and surrounded by, as the Bible says, scoundrels, God had not left him. God's purposes for him persisted even through these decisions. And the Bible says, as his story unfolds, that Jephthah, he was once again redeemed in his spirit, knowing that God was calling him to be a judge over Israel. And his end was so much better than his beginning. He became a well-known judge of the people of Israel and did valiant works 
for God's sake. Why? Because God was able to deliver him from the rejection of his loved ones. God gave him a future. Oh, my friend, if you are struggling with a feeling of rejection for whatever reason, know this. God is one who will stick closer to you than any brother, any sister, any husband or wife. God is the one who is there for you and will never leave you nor forsake you. Jephthah. An example of one who needed to get past his past. An example of one who, because of the rejection of loved ones, he made some bad decisions. But also the example of one who was delivered from his feelings of pain and hurt because of rejection and given another life, a new life. You can get past your past just like Jephthah did. The second example I want to give you is found in Acts chapter 9, verses 17 to 21. And it's the example of Saul, later called Paul the Apostle. In Acts chapter 9, verses 17 to 21, and I'm going to read this for you right now. It says there, Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has so sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on his name, on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? I'll pause right there. Saul had been gloriously delivered by the power of God. God got his attention on the road to Damascus. And then God sent his prophet to minister to him. And Saul realized the error of his ways and changed his life. He was a new creature. And the Bible says, as soon as he received this sight, he was baptized and he immediately went out and began to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The same gospel that at one point he had persecuted. He sought to reach out to people who before in a previous life he had sought to destroy. God changed him. And he was demonstrating that change. But in the midst of demonstrating that change, there were people who stood up and said, wait a minute, isn't this the same Saul that was persecuting us? Isn't this the same Saul that was a murderer? Isn't this the same Saul that was messing up and being sinful? And they doubted him, in fact, their words were to discourage anyone from listening to this man of God and hearing what God had placed in his heart. My friends, sometimes people will not allow you to be free. Saul's sins were legitimate and awful. And at a time when he needed encouragement, those sins were thrown in his face. You see, Saul is an example of someone whose past reputation of sinfulness was thrown at him by people who did not take the time to see the change. You see, sometimes our past will keep us in bondage because even though God has changed us and taught us lessons by the things we've done wrong, sometimes people won't allow you to move on past those things. They'll say, oh, you are the one who did X. You are the one who did Y. And because of that, nothing good can come out of your mouth and nothing good can come out of your life. Are you that person today? 
You're feeling stuck because even though you want to change your life, people continuously tell you that you cannot be what God wants you to be because of your sinfulness or things you've done in your past. You know, unfortunately, it is a shame to say this, but some of the most hurtful things that happen to people happen in church. Because people in church have this false idea that they can judge other people by a standard that God does not judge themselves, does not judge them by. And unfortunately, because of that judgment of other people, people are discouraged, feel deflated, and feel like they cannot move forward in their faith. But thank God for deliverance from sin. Let me say this, my friend. God is not like man. God doesn't throw what you've done bad in your face. God doesn't want to see you destroyed. No. God is a forgiving God, full of grace and mercy and goodness. And for as much as he gives you breath to breathe, he is giving you opportunity to have abundant life, no matter what you've done. When you say, Pastor, I've done so many bad things. I've hurt people. I have destroyed lives even. Let me say this, my friend, God is still able, no matter how deep in the sin you've waded, God is able by his grace to clean you up, to turn you around and set you on your way, giving you an opportunity to participate in abundant life. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 103, Verse 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. The Bible also says in Micah chapter 7, verse 19, you will again have compassion on us, God. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl our iniquities into the depths of the sea. My friend, there is no sin that God cannot forgive. There is no past that God cannot whitewash and give you another opportunity to fix. As long as you have breath, God is calling you and God is offering you a chance to please him and to be fulfilled. Don't let people keep you in bondage. Because unfortunately, people who spend a lot of time judging other people are people who probably don't judge themselves very much. If we were all honest, we would be at the foot of the cross every moment of every day, crying out for grace and mercy. Why? Because we are all sinners. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. If I use your sinfulness to keep you in bondage, I am not working for God. I am working for the enemy. Because God does not throw our sins in our face. He forgives our sin as a faithful and just God does. And he gives us a chance, an opportunity to make right what went wrong. Saul had done a lot of bad things in his life. And he had many accusers, people who thought to themselves that he could never be used for good. But thank God, in the midst of those discouraging thoughts and words, Saul did not give up. And if we know the story, God changed his name to Paul, and the Apostle Paul became probably the greatest example of evangelism in the history of the Scriptures. Paul was used mightily by God, someone who used to destroy the church. God turned him around and used him to build it. Oh, my friend, do not allow your past to be thrown in your face in such a way that you give up. No. Listen to God's report, not the report of people who don't know what God is doing in your life. Saul and his reputation for sinfulness was forgiven and given an opportunity to move on. Are you like that today? Are you allowing your sinful past to keep you from moving forward? 
Are you saying, I've done so many bad things that God could never love me or God could never use me? Those are lies from the pit of hell. God is saying to you today, I love you and I love you with an everlasting love and I will never give up on you no matter what you've done. He made you. His purposes for you remain. He's just waiting on you to get past your past. He's waiting on you to believe his report, not the report of people who don't know what's true. Listen to the report of God and be set free and be encouraged in your spirit to move on. So we have the, the example of Jephthah, someone who was hurt by loved ones. We have the example of Saul, someone who had a reputation for sinfulness that was thrown in his face. And we've seen God's deliverance for both of these men. Thirdly and finally, I want to take you to the book of Job. Job chapter 30, verses 19 to 28. This is a pretty long portion of scripture, but I want to read it because it, it, I think it properly describes the turmoil that happens in the heart of someone whose past is haunting them. Job chapter 30, verse 19 to 28. Job says there, and he's speaking about God. He says, he throws me into the mud and I am reduced to dust and ashes. I cry out to you, God, but you do not answer. I stand up, but you merely look at me. You turn on me ruthlessly with the might of your hand. You attack me. You snatch me up and drive me before the wind. You toss me about in the storm. I know you will bring me down to death to the place appointed for all the living. Surely no one lays a hand on a broken man when he cries for help in his distress. Have I not wept for those in trouble? Has not my soul grieved for the poor? Yet when I hoped for good, evil came. When I looked for light, then came darkness. The churning inside me never stops. Days of suffering confront me. I go about blackened, but not by the sun. I stand up in the assembly and cry for help. Do you hear the desperation in Job's voice? Do you hear his abandon? He's not being politically correct. He's expressing pain. And he expresses a pain that many people under the sound of my voice feel in their hearts every day over things that have happened in their past. Pain of things that were done to you. Pain of things that are being done to you. Pain of opportunities that were missed in life. Pain of being in the wrong relationships. Oh, my friend, there are so many reasons why pain happens in our lives. And sometimes because of that pain, we are left in bondage. We are left in this place where we are tripped up about our future. Where we don't see anything that's positive and we have no hope. You see, Job is a picture of someone who's going through the pain of personal suffering. And unfortunately, sometimes things that have happened to us in our past that have caused us pain remain with us and sometimes remain with us for a lifetime because we are unable by God's grace to, to, to be able to, to properly process it and to be able by God's grace to be able to overcome it and achieve what God's desire is for a life. Yes, personal suffering is a dilemma for many of us. And the first thing we ask ourselves when we've been through suffering is, God, why did you allow me to go through this? Who knows, there may be some of you listening to me that you really have some issues with God. You may not express it every day, but in your heart, you're saying to yourself, how can a loving and good God, a God who says he loves me and is reaching out to me in grace, how could he allow these things to have happened to me? Oh, my friend, I would not venture to tell you why you have gone through what you've been through. But I will venture to tell you this. That the very God that you may be struggling with, the very God that you might have some issues with, is the same God 
that is full of love and desires to be your comfort and grace for what you've been through. Maybe you've been trying to operate and deal with your pain personally. Maybe you've drowned it in things like drugs and alcohol. Maybe you've drowned it in relationships, but it keeps on coming back. Why does it keep coming back? Because those things were never meant to fix your pain. Only the one who has made your heart, he is the only one who is able to fix it when it is hurting. God can help, but you have to believe. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. That means every single pain, present and past, cast it upon him. The Bible says in Psalm 147, verse 3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Yes, the wounds may be deep, but God is able to begin the process of healing in you right now, if you will but trust him. In Matthew 11, verse 28, Jesus says, come to me. Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. You want rest for your spirit, for things that have happened in your past? Come to God. Establish your relationship with him and watch him work. Job went through a situation that many of us could not even imagine. In one day, he lost everything. Everything he owned, all his loved ones, all his family members, and he even lost his health. He got sick. And it is out of this pain that we see him expressing the things that he expressed in Job chapter 30. And we can identify with that. Yes, it hurts, and we do want to express it. But how can we get past it? How are we able to overcome it? so that it will not follow us through our entire lives. Yes, express yourself to God, but listen to his answer. And Job, even after he expressed these painful things to God, God answered him. God came to him. And God gave him the answer that he needed to hear. And as soon as Job submitted himself to God's answers, God changed the circumstances. Oh, my friend, Job ended up with double what he had before. Why? Because God wants you to get past your past and to be able to experience the abundance of life. But you have to trust him. Is that you today? Are you holding on to personal pain? And because you haven't been able to reconcile your pain with a loving God, are you lost? Finding yourself confused about what the next step should be? Oh, my friend, let Jesus bring you past your past. It may seem insurmountable, but he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ask or even think. You have to trust him. Jephthah, an example of those who are rejected by loved ones. Saul, an example of those who have their past thrown in their face because of a reputation for sinfulness. And Job, the example of those who go through the pain of personal suffering and don't know how to get past it. My friend, in every single one of those cases, God came through and changed the circumstance. But it took people who were ready and willing to allow God to deliver them. You see, the reason why we're not delivered is not because God is not willing. It is mainly because we are not ready. In our minds, in our hearts, we hold on to these things, either because we are overwhelmed by them or because we don't think we deserve anything but that. But God is saying to you and me today, trust him. Let him bring you past your past so that you can go on. That is the encouragement to our spirits today. And by God's grace, I hope that every one of us 
will be able to access God's grace and mercy to overcome our past and to be able to live the life that he wants us to live and to bring him glory and honor through it. Because ultimately, that's why we're here. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word. It is true. And Lord, wherever we find ourselves right now, I ask you to minister to us. Give us hope for those who are in deep pain. Maybe this message has dug up some things that people did not necessarily want to dig up. Lord God, I pray that you will be the one to take these things and to put them to bed once and for all in the lives of every listener. Bring deliverance, bring grace, bring mercy, and remind everyone that you will never leave them nor forsake them. I want to thank you, Father, for what is happening in our world, even things that don't necessarily look very good. Thank you for the protests that are going on, Lord God. We pray your blessing upon the protesters. We ask for your blessing upon law enforcement. That, Lord God, during this time of change, Lord, you will do your mighty work. And that the truth will set us all free. Lord, I pray for those who are on the front line of the COVID-19 pandemic, for doctors and nurses, medical practitioners, all first responders. Lord God, we ask your blessing, your strength, your encouragement, and your protection upon each and every one. For those who are sick, we ask you, Lord God, for your mercy and for your healing. Thank you for hearing our prayers. We love you. We praise you, and we will continue to trust you in all things. I pray and ask this, these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Home. 
You can get past your past. You can walk away from painful memories. Past your past. You don't have to be alone. You can stand upon the word of God. Your yesterdays can be gone. Let Jesus bring you past your past. Then you can go on. Go on. Go on. Let Jesus bring you past your past. Then you can go. Yesterday, regardless of how far you've run, you don't think you'll ever get away. Run on a little farther to the Father's mercy throne. There you can find a brand new start. His heart will be your home. You can get past your past. You can walk away from painful memories. Past your past. You don't have to be alone. You can stand upon the word of God. Your yesterdays can be gone. Let Jesus bring you your past, then you can go on, go on, go on, let Jesus bring you past your past, then you can go on. 